Hello and welcome to day number 10 and this is the day where I finally start modeling the first parts of the Saura RK7. It took me 9 videos to get to a point where I feel confident enough to use the tools in Fusion 360 and actually build something and as you can see I've started to recreate or rebuild the wheel according to the reference images and I've also already placed the wheel in our main assembly. And while I was doing my research, I came across a reference image. It was this one here that attracted my attention. Um, the version of the vehicle that you can see here was one that was taken by the British Army and shipped over to the US during the World War II. And the US Army made some tests with it to find out how the vehicle works. And for this reason, they have attached a different set of wheels. And I think these wheels look much better than the original wheels that are attached to the RK7. So I have decided to give it a try and recreate these wheels instead. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly and step-by-step step how I built the rim, the tire and the tread pattern. Now let's get started. As you can see, I've already placed a circle in the scene. This one serves as a guideline. It helps me to get an idea of how big the final wheel should be. And before I start drawing the first sketch lines, let's create two new components first. So I'll go to assembly, new component. The first one is my rim. And the second one, and before I create this one, I make sure that the top level assembly is active. I go to assembly drop down menu again, new component. This one is my tire component. And before I continue with the rim, I make sure that the corresponding component is active. Then let's choose the right plane first. Then I hit L on the keyboard to enter the sketch mode. I pick the right plane, zoom in a little bit and draw a line like so. And when I do this, you can see that this purple line appears. Um, and this is a projection of our circle. And this happens automatically because I have set the settings under preferences. If you go to design here, the outer project edges and references is checked. And whenever this one is on, everything you touch with a line gets automatically project to the uh, currently active sketch plane. So you can turn this off if you don't want the fusion to project all of your lines. And then I simply continue to add an additional line like so. And one more. And then let's draw another line at the top. This is going to be another reference line. And I click on it, hit the X key on the keyboard to turn it into a construction line and give it some dimensions with the D key. Oh, let's probably set this to 20 centimeters. And then I'm gonna use the coincident constraint to click on this purple circle first. And then I hover over the construction line by holding down the shift key to select the center point. And now this line is constrained to the center. And I'm gonna use this to uh, determine the width of the wheel. Let's make these lines a little bit narrower. I'm just eyeballing here. Of course, it's always a good idea to uh, turn your sketches into fully defined sketches, but for this demonstration, it's not necessary. Also for the entire design, uh, it wasn't necessary to define every line perfectly because the main focus was more on the, the actual look and the forms of the wheel. Then I'm gonna replace this straight line uh, with an arc, so I simply select and delete it. Then I press S on the keyboard, type in arc to select the three point arc, point one, point two, and point three somewhere in the middle. And then let me quickly adjust the lines a little bit. And probably make this a little bit higher. And a little bit wider. And then I select all of the line segments, press O on the keyboard to bring up the offset tool. And then let's offset this one by minus one. And then I am gonna close the profile with the line tool again. 
double click to select all of the outlines and then I mirror it by selecting the center line and finish the sketch. And we can now already try to revolve the profile. So I choose the revolve feature, select both profiles and the axis around here. And this already turns our simple sketch into the base of the rim. It's probably a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna show the sketch, double click on the sketch icon to enter the sketch. And let's see if we can move the whole thing down just a tad, exit the sketch again and this already looks a lot better. Now let's continue with the inner part of the rim and for this reason I deactivate the auto projection of the reference lines first. I'll go to design and turn off the auto project edges on references and then I select the right plane again press the L key to start the sketch tool, select the right plane and before I start sketching let's slice the thing so that we can see what's going on a little bit easier. And then I simply start drawing some lines Then I switch to the three point arc tool one more time, draw an arc around here and then another straight line at the bottom and I select this, hit X on the keyboard to turn it into a construction line then I select the arc and the construction line and make both tangent and then I simply continue with the line tool and draw a few more lines like so and now Let's select the segments by double clicking on them. Press O on the keyboard to bring up the offset command and then I'm going to offset it by minus one. And last but not least, I'm going to close the profile. Then I'm drawing a horizontal line straight through the other line and trim these parts away. And close the profile at the bottom and then we can already try to revolve also this one so go to create revolve select the profile and instead of a new body I want to join it with the part of the rim that I've created before select the Y axis again and press OK this looks already quite good. So let's do some minor adjustments. I'm gonna double click on the sketch profile again, enable slice. And again, whenever you are dealing with a sketch where the segments are not fully defined, uh, you can easily mess up the entire uh, drawing just by moving one line around. So let's say if I, for instance, grab this one and move it, it still works okay but sometimes as soon as you grab one point and move it around on a sketch that is not very well defined everything is uh, starting to uh, fly around or float around in space now let's break up the middle section of the rim a little bit and add some details I'm gonna select the front plane as my sketch plane, then I draw a straight line from the origin to the top. I click on it, press X on the keyboard to turn it into a construction line, and then I start adding a spline with a couple of spline points. I'm going to reposition them a little bit. And let's make the top and the bottom tangent by creating two additional construction lines. Then I select um, the spline handle here and attach it or constrain it to the construction line at the bottom. 
and then I do the same at the top and all that's left to do is to adjust the form a little bit more and then we can simply select the spline and use the center line to mirror it to the other side and then I can continue adjusting the shape so when I'm done I hit the Q key to exit the sketch mode and then I can already start uh, cutting a hole into uh, the rim and as you can see because our sketching plane lies pretty much in the center of the whole construction it cuts on the back but not so uh, well on the front and for this reason I'm going to select two sides and move this out a little bit so it cuts through the whole thing then I click on OK looks pretty decent then let's use this cut and um, create a circular pattern so make sure that features is selected in the pattern type then I go down to the timeline select the cut and for the axis I go with the Y axis again and for the quantity I enter 6 then I press OK and now it's also time to adjust the profile by double clicking on it so I try to move it down just a little bit and then let's move this point up and make it slightly rounder Perfect, and then I add a fillet to this edge. Uh, let's try something like four. Very nice. And then I'm also gonna adjust uh, the profile of the middle section of the rim. So I double click on the sketch, enable slice, and let's see if I can move these lines around without messing up the entire drawing. So make this thicker a little bit. This one probably a little bit shorter. Let's see if we can move the arch to the back a little bit, like so. Looking pretty good. Then I finish the sketch. And let's add two additional fillets to these two edges. maybe something like this or maybe even more let's try one and last but not least I'm gonna add a few holes to the center so I create a sketch on this plane choose the circle tool draw a circle like so add some dimensions this time two centimeters are fine and then I select the center point of the circle and the center point or, or the origin and turn this into a vertical constraint and this time instead of using the cutout feature to create a pattern I'm gonna do this in the sketch mode so go to create down to circular pattern select the circle and the center point, this is our origin here, enter 6 and then I exit the sketch by hitting the Q key then I select all of these circles and push them back in so that I perforate the section and instead of distance I select all and click on OK then let's add a chamfer to this edge and an additional chamfer to all of these edges around here something small like uh, 0.2 now let's try 0.3 and then I click on OK then let me change the very first profile one more time so I double click on the sketch let's see if I can move this point outwards just a tad then I finish the sketch and when I now zoom in close you can see that we have an additional phase where the fillet is 
So this one is probably caused by the adjustments I've just made on the sketch. And the cool thing in Fusion 360 is that you can simply select uh, these faces, then hit the delete key on the keyboard and Fusion gets rid of it and creates a nice transition where the fillet is and at the same time it adds this delete face command to the timeline. This is probably not the best method of course, it's always uh, better to have um, a solid and very well defined drawing, but in this case it works well. Now let's see if we can add some chamfers to the perforations here. And I wasn't adding them before because they were causing some trouble with the big fillet. So let's see if we can reposition the fillet in the timeline. And for this reason I move the slider over to the point where I was creating this fillet. And then I drag and drop the fillet command before the cut, like so. So this was our starting point. Then I was adding the fillets. And after I've placed the fillet now, I do the cut. And before I use the pattern feature, let's see if we can add a chamfer to this edge. Something small like 0.3 is already enough. And if I now move the slider over to the right, you can see that we have our perforations, but the chamfer is missing. And this is because the pattern command is only applied to one feature. So I'm double clicking on it. Then I select or deselect all of the objects. And then I select the perforation or the cut together with the chamfer. And when I click on OK, the chamfer should appear on all of the perforations. Next, let's also add the bolts that keep the middle section of the rim in place. And for this one, I go to the right plane. I start a sketch again, select the corresponding plane, and then I'm going to choose um, the Edge Polygon tool. And before I start drawing, I switch to the circumscribed polygon, draw it on the plane like so. Then let's Mm, add some constraints and a dimension. And then I'm going to exit the sketch by hitting the Q key. I extrude the thing. Then I select the top plane and create a sphere on top of it. Instead of cut, I switch the operation to new body. Size looks okay. And then I'm going to move the sphere in place. And let's also chamfer the edges of our bolt. Let's try a low value like 0.1. This is already enough. Looking good. And then I'm going to combine these two bodies, the sphere and the bolt. Make sure that the operation is set to join. And then I use the move tool again. Select the center point. Switch to the front view. And move this guy approximately in place. Rotate the thing a little bit. So this is looking good. Again. This one is attached or listed as a separate body. So I'm gonna go to create next pattern, circular pattern. And here for the type, I make sure that body is selected. I select the bolt. And for my axis, I go for the Y axis again. And let's enter a value of 20 and hit OK. This is looking good, except that we have some slight intersections here. So this means I have to go back and adjust the position one more time. And this is great. We can always go back in history and do these quick adjustments. And last but not least, I'm going to use the combine tool one more time. I select uh, the rim as my target body, and then all of the bolts as my tool bodies, set the operations to join, click on OK, and then I end up with one solid body again.
Now to complete the rim, let's add a few more fillets and I start with these two edges here. Press F on the keyboard to bring up the fillet command. Let's try something low like 0.3. And for this edge here, let's try something bigger like one. And this is looking good. Now I also go down to the display settings camera and set the view from orthographic to perspective with ortho faces. So this sets or this turns perspective on in the viewport. And as soon as I click on a orthographic view, uh, like the front view, for instance, um, the orthographic view is turned on again. And when I rotate the model into an isometric view, perspective is on. And this allows me to read the forms a little bit better. Now, before I move on to the tire, let's assign a different material to our rim. And I'm going to look for something less shiny. So let me choose something like this. It's already looking pretty good. Double click on the material. Let's make it a little bit more yellowish, slightly orange, like so. And then let's probably make it a little bit more shiny by lowering the roughness value. And then we are done. And I'm closing the appearance window again. Then I switch or I activate the tire component, select the right plane and start a sketch on it. And like we have done before, I activate the slice function again so that we can see what's going on in the inside a little bit better. I start with the three point arc first, then I Try to follow the top of our rim and create another arc around here. Then I close it off with a straight line on the side and another arc, three point arc at the top. Then let's make another straight line at the very top that serves as a construction line. And I need this to make the arc tangent. So when we later on mirror one half over, I don't want to have any edges or breaks on top. So I make it tangent. And I also apply a constraint, a coincidence constraint to the end of the arc and the top of our reference line. And then I continue with adjusting the profiles a little bit more. And let's also add a fillet here. And then I can exit the sketch and see how this thing looks. Um, at the moment, we do not have a closed profile, but this doesn't matter. We can switch to the surface tab, go down to create revolve, select the open profile or the open sketch in this case, and the Y axis is our center line. And this gives us a pretty good preview of what half of the tire will look like. And I'm going to also assign another material. So let's see if we can find something um, like rubber. Uh, let's try this one. It's a little bit too dark, so I'll make it slightly lighter like so. Right, looking already very good. Now next, let's add some thickness to the tire. And before I do this, I get rid of the uh, surface revolve. Then I show the sketch, double click on it. Select the sketch lines, press O and give it some thickness. Let's try minus one. Then I'm gonna close the bottom part off with another three point arch. I activate the tangent command, select these lines and make a straight line at the top to turn it into a closed profile. Then I finish the sketch again. And this time we can go back to our solid tab, create, revolve, 
the profile is already selected and I'm going to select the uh, Y axis next and I end up with a solid half of our tire. The only thing that's left is to reassign the rubber material and to hide the sketch again. Before I continue with the thread pattern, let me quickly enter the sketch one more time. Let's make it a little bit thicker and probably also a little bit bigger and wider. So I set the thickness or the offset value to minus two. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it does. And then let's also move the profile up a little bit and just point out like so. And again, it's always a little bit tricky if you are dealing with a sketch that is not fully defined, so you can mess it up easily. Try to move this point around, or maybe this one. Okay, looking good. I finished the sketch. The entire tire is a little bit bigger now, and we can proceed with creating the sketch for the tread pattern. And for this one, I start with an offset plane first. So go to construction, offset plane, choose the top plane, and then I move it up so that it sits a little bit above the tire. So let me quickly check if the camera is set to perspective with auto faces. Like so then I move this guy down a little bit and we can make it bigger. So this only affects the visual appearance of the plane. It does not has any effect on the sketching plane or the plane itself. And then I right click on it like so and create a new sketch. Let's rotate the whole thing by 90 degrees. So if you go up to the view cube, you can click on these arrows here to rotate the thing. Then I'm going to project this line first by hitting the P key on the keyboard. And then I use the line tool to draw a couple of lines. And then I add a few constraints. This one should be vertical. Then these two lines should be parallel. Let's add some dimensions between these two lines. Something like 3.5 centimeters should be fine. And then let's close this off with an arc. This time it has to be tangent. And let's also define an angle here. And bring this line closer to the center a little bit more. And then I finish the sketch. Next, let's extrude the sketch. And instead of setting the operation to cut, I set it to new body. And then we uh, define how deep the tread pattern is going to cut into the existing tire. And I define the depth by going to the surface tab, create offset. Then I pick the inside faces of our tire, um, set the distance to minus 0.5 so that I'm moving it a little bit to the inside of the tire. I click on OK. If I hide the body, it looks like this. And in the next step, I'm going to replace this face here. And to make this possible, I have to extend this edge a little bit more to the center, like so. And then I also have to make sure that everything of our thread pattern here is inside the surface. So let me show you what I mean by this. So I select this face first, activate the move and copy command. Then I place the gizmo accordingly, minus 48. And then I can rotate this face to the inside. And now we can switch back to the solid tab, go to modify, replace face. And I select the face of our tread pattern as the source face and our offset surface as the target face. 
and this one ends up in a clean cut like so. So let's hide the surface again because we don't need it anymore. And then I show the body and choose the combine tool. The tire is my target body. Set the operation to cut, click on OK. And this is the first part of our thread pattern. All that's left to do now is to move some faces and add a few fillets. But before this, I travel back in time, use the push and pull commands to pull this face out just a tad. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, it does. And then let me select this face, bring up the move and copy command. I set the pivot first. And then I simply rotate this face in place. And this is what I love so much about Fusion 360. It allows you to do all of these crazy operations, usually without destroying the entire model. Then I select both faces in the center, hit the delete key, as I'm gonna apply a fillet here manually later on. And now let's start with adding fillets to the very bottom first. Let's try something big like four for this one. And I'm gonna add another fillet here. Let's try something like three. And then I'm gonna fillet also all of these edges. Let's try something small like 0.5, voila. Only one step left and then we are done. And I go to create pattern, circular pattern. I select all of our features and the Y axis as the axis for the rotation. The quantity is set to 24, computation method optimized. And then I give Fusion a second or maybe two to calculate everything and it already looks very cool. And last but not least, I'm gonna mirror the entire body. As my mirror plane, I select this plane here, click on OK. And before I combine both, let me select the second half, activate the move command, and I'm gonna position the gizmo in the center and rotate the whole thing by, let's say, something like eight degrees. And then I'm gonna use the combine tool to combine both parts. In this case, the operation has to be set to join and we are done. So as you can see, there is no edge in the center of our tire. And this is because I was using a tangent constraint for the profile and everything else looks pretty nice too. So I go back to the top level assembly and I will do some minor adjustments on the rim next and then I call the wheel done. Let's try to push in the middle section of the rim a little bit more. And for this reason, I search for the profile sketch. It was the second one. Double click on it, enable slice, select all of the sketch lines, bring up the move and copy command and then I move the profile back quite a bit. And let's deactivate the slice before I finish the sketch. And now I give Fusion again a few seconds and I have a couple of error messages. So actually only one warning. And as you can see, the cutouts in this middle are missing. So let's take a look at the extrude feature and of course it's not extruding the right way anymore. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I get rid of the two-sided direction and for the distance I set it to uh, cut through all. And let's see if this already does the trick. Yeah, it does, looking very good. And all that's left to do is to reposition our bolts. And it was probably this one here. When I double click on it, I can activate the move and copy command. Then I move it in place.
and now I finally call this thing done. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it was helpful and I'm gonna create a lot more of these step-by-step -step tutorials in the future while I'm building the Saurer RK7. In case you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell and see you in the next one.